Corneal Neovascularization in multiple quadrants. Centrally, there is a, a central uh, corneal opacity uh, with the surrounding uh, corneal edema, severe corneal edema. Oh, okay. Uh, anything else do you see? In the, I, I know the the lightning is not is not great, but anything else that you can uh, point out? I'm not sure if there is a uh, overlying uh, epithelial defect. Yes. Can you describe that? <laughs> yeah. Can you describe the epithelial defect? Yeah. It's it, it's it raised edge and rolled edges. What and the shape of it? It's, uh, it's like uh, it's irregular, irregular CED, okay. irregular border. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at it carefully, it's kind of geographic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, what's uh, uh, what you would do here, Rakan? So this patient okay, now. came in uh, from uh, from uh, uh, Al Qasim region. He's complaining from pain, uh, redness, uh, blurry vision for the last uh, maybe uh, two weeks or three weeks. Uh, he had been seeing uh, at a local hospital, and they gave him some medication, uh, but with no much of improvement. He had this problem maybe two or three years ago. Uh, so he came to you to solve this problem. What's your next step? Is he on a steroid? Well, he told, he told us that he's using drops, but he did not bring it with you. So really, we don't know what he's using. And it was there history of trauma or surgery? No. And this is recurrent. This is a second attack, right? Yeah, he had similar similar uh, problem two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I would think uh, of uh, taking uh, PCR from this uh, legion uh, to roll out uh, uh, herbetic. Also, we can check the corneal sensation. Excellent. Uh, uh, and we do general, uh, general scraping as any case of microbial keratitis. Mm -hmm. And you will start the patient in any medications? Uh, it depends on the PCR result. And my clinical suspicion, um, if the BCR came positive for herbetics or I am uh, highly sure uh, that this is mostly herbetic, maybe I can uh, use a, a cyclovir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So um, also when you put the stain, um, you know, I usually mention this, that um, we have only three stains in, in, in cornea. Uh, we have the fluorescein, rose bengal, and lasmin green. Lasmin green and rose bengal are identical. Actually, lasmin green has more adv uh, advantage over rose bengal that is not toxic. So uh, it, it will be less irritant to the patient. And if you are planning to do a PCR or culture, it will not kill the organism. Uh, rose bengal and lasmin green stains um, devitalize cells, sick cells, sick epithelial cells. Um, it will stain filaments, which is um, mucus and dead cells and uh, epithelial cells that are not covered by mucin. You know the mucin, they are uh, mucin is mainly secreted by the goblet cells. This is excreted, it will be in the tear fill, and there is a mucin that will be on the epithelial cell and it will be secreted by the epithelial cell, the MUC1 and 4. And in cases of severe dryness and there is no mucin covering this epithelial cells, you can stain this area with lasmin green and uh, Rose bengal. Fluorescein, on the other hand, will stain basement membrane. So if you put uh, fluorescein in, 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 um, in, in, in this patient, uh, in this patient's eye, the, the fluorescein will be in the basement membrane and the defect itself and the ulcer. And mainly rose bengal or lasmin green will be at the edges. And this also can help you to differentiate, for example, from healing epithelium versus uh, sick epithelium or infected epithelium. And, um, because of the picture and uh, the clinical picture and the decreased sensation, I would start the patient in antiviral as well as antibiotics. And um, there's a debate either to start the patient with topical antiviral or systemic antiviral. The systemic antiviral, you will save the patient from the toxicity from this poor ocular surface. Huh? Um, but however, if I have 
uh, epithelial disease, I usually like to give a topical medication. Anyway, to make this, uh, this story short, this, uh, the PCR of this patient came back positive for PCR. For PCR. Uh, he received at the beginning a PO antiviral. Uh, then when we get the result, we shifted him on uh, topical antiviral. So th th this, is, this is the same patient, uh, Abdurrahman, um, I think two weeks after, uh, sorry, I can't, two, two weeks after. You know, for, for sake of time, maybe I will just uh, uh, continue. So, so um, uh, uh, the, the, the main idea I, 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 uh, I showed this slide that sometimes, you know, don't wait in the epithelial defect. I usually say this in my presentation and my clinics and uh, everywhere. Huh? Uh, if you have a poor ocular surface, you need to fix the ocular surface, the poor ocular surface. So you gave the patient antiviral, you treated the, fun the, the virus, but still the patient has poor ocular surface. The cornea will not heal unless if you give the cornea an optimum environment for the cornea to fix. So this patient, I did not wait. I did tarsorophy right away. And within five days, the cornea closed to, to one by one. We saw him last week, and I'm sure now it's, it's closed completely. So um, again, whenever I have a chance to uh, to emphasize in using tarsorophy, I will I, I will I will mention it. Huh? Let's go back to fungal keratitis. So um, the two main categories that we have in ophthalmology is is pulene and azole. The pulene will bind to the orgestrol, and this will damage the cell membrane and will lead to leak of the uh, uh, organic molecules and the cell will die. The azole will prevent the um, conversion of uh, inostrol to orgestrol by inhibition of um, 14 alpha inostrol uh, methylase enzyme, uh, and this will lead to the de death of the of the cell. <clears throat> the only approved, the only uh, US USA uh, FDA approved medication for fungal keratitis is natamycin. Uh, five percent. Before that, uh, doctor were using amphotericin B, uh, uh, 0.15, 0.3 percent. Um, uh, but since the FDA become commercially available, which is uh, um, a huge advantage, so that you don't have even if you, if you don't have access to uh, the compound pharmacy, uh, you can use the netamycin, the commercially available netamycin, five percent. <clears throat> the voriconazole. Uh, become popular because of two studies, uh, 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 which is down in the bottom. And they showed that um, the ocular penetration of voriconazole is excellent. And the other study showed that the, uh, the voriconazole in vitro is effective against most of the uh, uh, fungus that will cause uh, uh, keratitis. So people start to use uh, voriconazole uh, a lot. But there was no like um, uh, randomized clinical trial till this study came along. This is the MUT study. Muhannad al Khalifa, I'm going to you. Muhannad? Rakan? Will anyone aware of the MUT study, the myocritic ulcer treatment trial? And we will continue. The, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of study in, in, uh, in cornea, uh, but we have really a few good ones. So we need to, to know them by heart. Huh? One of them is the MUT study, which is a well-designed, randomized clinical trial conducted in India. And uh, 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 the rationale of the study was to compare the natamycin versus voriconazole and fungal keratitis. So they recruited uh, 323 patients of uh, uh, smear positive fungal keratitis into uh, two arms. Uh, one arm received voriconazole 1%, and the other arm uh, used uh, natamycin 5%. And they gave the medication every hour till rehabilitation. Then they gave the patient QID for three weeks. They, were, they, they used to see the patient every three days, and um, uh, uh, the, 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 the corneal ulcer was bad, but not so bad. So the, the VA ranges from 2040 up to 2400. And um, uh, 
uh, and they had to stop the trial. Why? Because they found that uh, in the, uh, there is more corneal perforation in the voriconazole group. Uh, so they had to stop the trial. And, and what, they, what, they know, what they observed as well, that the, the vision was better in the natamycin group compared to the voriconazole group uh, by 1.4 line. But when they did a sub-analysis and they looked at only at the fusarium, they found that the vision was better in the natamycin group by four lines. Hmm? And the other thing that they did um, uh, in, in day number six, after starting the medication, they recultured the patient and they found that the natamycin group had more negative culture compared to the voriconazole group. This might indicate that the natamycin was able to kill uh, the, the fungus uh, faster than the faster and more effective than than the voriconazole. So their conclusion that natamycin is superior uh, to uh, voriconazole, especially in in fusarium. Yeah? And uh, Sherman also into the the, the MUT one published in 2010, and Sherma again reconfirmed their findings in 2015. And if you look at the, the Cookin uh, review, uh, which was published in 2015, again, they conclude that uh, netamycin is superior to um, voriconazole, especially in uh, fusarium. Hmm? We had this patient, uh, uh, I think 10 days ago or so, uh, this is a poor uh, 24 years old uh, female uh, monocular, huh? had retinal surgery uh, two months ago uh, for diabetic retinopathy. She lost the other eye because of diabetic retinopathy. And uh, she developed an epithelial defect uh, where her, her doctor or another doctor, I can't recall, placed uh, um, uh, BCL. And the patient developed a corneal ulcer. She went to a, another uh, institution and they did the um, culture uh, and started the patient and fortified antibiotics and, and uh, antifungal fl fluconazole. The patient came to us because of no, no improvement. Um, uh, well, the problem we have, we have only five minutes, so I will, I will continue. If you look at this patient carefully, superiorly, there is a line of, uh, of infiltrate, yeah? um, and, and it's a bit you know, mid-stromal. Uh, there is, of course, almost like a ring shape, hypopian, uh, new vascularization, which indicates the chronicity of the infection, and multifocality as well. Um, she's in pain, yeah? uh, and uh, we did, again, culture and biopsy, and unfortunately, it came back negative. Huh? Uh, however, the confocal microscopy showed some, some uh, circular uh, organism within the corneal stroma. And if you look at this line, it looks like radial perineuritis. Hmm? Uh, so we don't have uh, real evidence, but with the clinical picture and the confocal image, uh, we started the patient on an uh, anti acanthamoeba medication. Dr. Abdelmanov Rene and Alain Zakhir, he took, يعني, uh, he did a huge effort to get the medication and to, uh, to, uh, to help this patient, although she's non Saudi. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but, but um, Abdelrahman Jalay Islam was, was pushing me to give the patient uh, PO voriconazole, PO voriconazole. And um, uh, why you want to give a patient uh, PO voriconazole? Again, I'm going to answer just because we have only four minutes left. Uh, um, you know, uh, with the intermittent uh, dosing of uh, topical medication, sometimes you will get sub, sub therapeutic or sub optimum uh, uh, medication level, and uh, and this was confirmed in this study, the one the one down below, where they took an accurate sample of patient. Uh, using PO voriconazole versus pa patients using topical voriconazole. And they found that the, the, the aqueous level of voriconazole was higher 
in the PO group. Uh, and, uh, uh, and why is that? Because, you know, when you take the medication by mouth, the, the medication will, st will stay in your blood till it, it becomes uh, it, 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 it become secreted. But when you use it topically within like an hour, half, half an hour, it will, it will disappear. But if it is um, in your bloodstream, it will continue putting the medication in the ocular tissue, especially with the boroconazole that has good ocular penetration. So this is where the MUT2 uh, came along. And um, uh, what they did, and they published their, uh, their study in 2016. So I really encourage you guys to read um, MUT1, MUT2. We don't have much study in, in Korea. Huh? So what they did, they, um, uh, they recruited uh, 240 patients with uh, smear positive fungal uh, keratitis. Uh, but it was a severe corneal ulcer. Uh, the vision was worse than 2400 vision, and all patients received topical netamycin and boriconazole, and they randomly uh, divided the patient to either use boriconazole 400 milligram uh, BID for one day, then 200 milligram BID for 20 days, total three weeks. And then uh, the, and, and the other group received, received the placebo. And um, they did not find any difference between two groups in terms of uh, uh, corneal perforation, people who needed uh, therapeutic PK, uh, even in the final uh, VA, although there was a small trend in the, uh, in the physarium group, maybe they got some benefit. Uh, they had better vision, uh, but it's not uh, significant. Huh? And their conclusion, uh, was that uh, the addition of oral verocanus to topical antifungal does not provide any therapeutic benefit for advancement in this fungal keratitis. 